Excellent. Adventure. Oh yeah. So, today's video is a little bit more on a serious note. Um, we had an incident, and this is something that we want to talk about as far as when you're traveling with dogs. And this could happen in an RV park, it could happen in a neighborhood if you're on a sticks and bricks. It's not necessarily specifically about traveling with RVs, but a lot of people that travel with RVs have dogs. And um, Steph, do you want to uh, tell your tale? Sure. So we were in an RV park in Arizona uh, recently, and um, my two dogs and I were walking, and we were attacked by a pit bull. Um, we, Big pit bull. Yeah, my two small dogs that weigh about 20 pounds each, uh, we were walking one morning um, through a park, and as we normally do, and my dogs were on leashes and harnesses, and we walked by a trailer, and I, I saw a very large dog, close to 100 pounds, I would say. He barked at us once or twice. He lunged, and he broke right off of his leash. It, broke, it snapped it, broke the whole thing, and he ran into the road, um, which we were in the center of, and he proceeded to attack my dogs. And... I tried to stop him and pushed him away and hit his nose and um, I was bit twice and I have two broken fingers from it and puncture wounds on both hands. Um, he also scratched my legs up pretty bad and um, I was able to grab one of my dogs and hand it to someone nearby who came running to help us and my other dog Lulu um, took the brunt of it and the pit bull grabbed her in the chest and took a huge chunk out and would not let go. Um, it was multiple minutes. Uh, we drew a crowd of watchers and they came over to try to help and get the pit bull off. Um, it took a few minutes before the dog released um, my dog and um, she was screaming in pain. It was terrible. And this had, dog just wouldn't let go. Yes. They were, I wasn't there. I didn't even know any of this was going on. I was way on the other side of the park inside trying to get it to let go. People were yanking on it. And uh, unfortunately, this dog had no intention of letting go. Yeah. So um, at some point, it released and the owner finally came running out. Um, I should tell you at this point, the dog was completely unattended leashed outside of the trailer, which is a big no-no in RV parks. You're not supposed to leave dogs unattended outside. Um, I would say 90% of the parks we stay in have this written right in the rules. Do not leave your dogs unattended outside your vehicle. So this dog um, was outside by itself, no owners present, and it did take a couple minutes of screaming before someone showed up. And once the dog released, um, people, I grabbed my dog obviously and ran back to the trailer and um, to our RV so that I could give her medical care and um, whatever she needed. They called, the police showed up, the sheriff's department. Thank you very much, sheriffs, if you watch this. Um, they showed up and did, you know, reports and interviews. And they also called animal control. And animal control did come out and um, take care of what she needed to do. She did say that in precaution of this in the future, she had a couple tips for us when um, walking our dogs if something like this was to happen again um, she told us that you could purchase one of the air horns like you use at stadiums and games and you can hit the button and set that off that usually stops the dogs in its track um, she also told us that we could carry a pepper spray keychain on our dog leash and we can spray the dog if we're attacked by a dog. So these are future steps we are going to take and carry with us. Um, as of right now, I have 
two broken fingers. <laughs> um, I have two broken bones and a chipped bone, and I have multiple puncture wounds on my hands. Um, it's been a week, and it is causing discomfort. And my we dog, had to have the the wedding band and engagement yeah, my ring. Wedding rings diamond, had to get cut off. <laughs> had to get cut off uh, because the swelling was so intense; it was cutting off the yeah. blood flow to her finger. And we'll show you um, a little video of uh, Lou's injuries uh, following this so you can see what we were uh, dealing with. But um, She had to be rushed to the animal hospital. She was in pretty hospital. rough shape. She was in a lot of pain. And she had to have surgery, and they had to do x-rays to make sure it didn't puncture anything inside her chest cavity. She has 20-plus stitches. She had to have a drain tube. And two drain tubes she's in her on chest. Multiple medications, and it was a very costly endeavor, um, and not fun to go through. It was there was so much, so much trauma involved with it. I mean, I cried off and on for two days. That was awful. I, I felt so bad, and I couldn't sleep. And I mean, it's it, something you don't really think about because I love dogs and I love animals, and there's not a dog I met that I don't love or you know want to hug or pet or but and I, getting attacked by a, a dog of, of this size is, is akin to getting attacked by an angry person yeah I, mean, I i literally had so much hate that day for this dog and i've never felt that before it was it was not a good feeling and you know i love my dogs we love our dogs like our children i we do everything for them they're spoiled rotten and you know Anytime someone hurts someone in your family or, you know, it, it really, it drives home. So we just wanted to put this out there in hopes that people with large dogs maybe get uh, a picture of what kind of damage these dogs can do um, to small dogs and people. Um, if you have a dangerous breed, maybe you shouldn't stay in campgrounds or if your dog is prone to previous attacks or, um, on I, another I, side note, mm -hmm. when the police were there, um, the owner did tell us and the police that the dog has attacked three times previously. So I'm not sure why they were in an RV park with the dog to begin with. Um, that's very worrisome that this dog's out there and by it, itself. And there is a, you know, a, a whole list of do's and don'ts when you go to these campgrounds. And typically, we, we don't have any beef with any dog. We, we, we're dog lovers, pet lovers in general. Um, but there is something to why they're asking you not to have certain breeds. And I think we all know who those breeds are without listing them. Um, and even the average dog, the, 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 the good, so-called good dogs, that can be, you know, the friendliest dog in the world. You just don't know when that dog is going to decide to bite your dogs. And in fact, when I'm walking my dogs, people will say, you know, I want to, you know, come in. My dog wants to see your dog. And I say, well, you know, these dogs are really old. And um, I, I really just want to protect them from any interaction with anybody that's bigger than my dog. So we're, we're, we got to be careful of that because dogs are, are dumb animals and for whatever reason they will lurch out and bite for the first time in, in 10 or 12 years or however old they are you just don't know so again we're dog lovers and and we're careful about it but uh again it's a cautionary tale of being careful with something like this yeah and we've had so many people tell us all dogs are good until they're not that's and right. there's just, you know, everyone says, oh, my dog is so kind. My dog is so nice until the minute they're not. And it's true. Even the dog control lady told me that's her famous saying. And it, it's true. I mean, you never know what's going to set them off. So just be mindful if you're, you know, don't leave your dogs outside of your rig unattended if you're not there. Um, you know, we've heard of these other horror stories of things happening in parks, too. And so we're really careful about you know, supervising our dogs and not leaving them unattended. They're always with us, whether inside or outside. They're on harnesses, so they can't break off or leashes or get out of them. Um, you know, we take all precautionary 
measures. And now we're going to carry pepper spray and, you know, air horns, whatever we need to do it when we walk them around the parks. Um, it, it's just a thing we feel like we need to do now to feel safe. And, and another note, um, it may be obvious, but uh, you got to remember that you're liable for anything. Your pet, you do whatever. And um, you could be in a world of trouble if your dog bites somebody attacks another dog and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that on the legal end of it but uh you got to be careful because you can end up in a whole lot of hurt real easy so you know please be a responsible dog owner if you're out there um do what you can to you know keep your dog safe and the people around you safe because we're all out here RVing we're enjoying you know these parks and if incidences like these keep happening it, they're gonna, the parks are going to, you know, become aware and take more measures against this. And it's going to make it a more strict environment for us all to use and to stay in. And that's no good for anyone. So, you know, be a good dog owner. Be a mindful dog owner. Pay attention to your dogs. Know, you know, where they're at. Don't leave them unattended. And, and the, this, is, uh, this isn't something that, I mean, this is somewhat of a rare occurrence, but in our the amount of traveling we've done this is the third time we've heard about something like this in fact we have some friends that uh they had a yorkie like one of ours that was attacked by a similar dog and that dog killed their yorkie and, yeah, and um, it was a two-year-old puppy in a park this happened and this was a nice park too this wasn't like you know ghetto park so you, and these people were deeply traumatized so you know again this can happen to anyone and dogs are, are part of your family and you know they're like our children too and uh we love them and we want to protect them so uh you don't want to have to deal with the trauma that we had to deal with and um hopefully steffi is going to start smiling again she's always <laughs> doing that to me yeah. but we're going to follow this up a little video of uh of Lulu. It's a little gruesome, but uh, yeah, and if you have a weak stomach, you may not want to watch this part. But we just wanted to show you what our dog has had to endure, and you know, maybe that'll you know teach someone a lesson out there that maybe they're you know not doing things the correct way. And <laughs> and Lulu is a tough old girl, yes, and so is this one. <laughs> oh, thanks, right? honey. So thanks. Hopefully this won't happen to you, but uh, please take precautions. Be aware of your surroundings. Uh, maybe carry pepper spray or something. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about firearms right now. Carry pepper spray. Be safe. and uh, Be a good camper. Be a good camper. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Thanks. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Smash, 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 smash. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Hopefully next one's more upbeat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're shooting for. We need some adventure and yeah. fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take care. This is me cleaning Lulu's wounds after her surgery. Um, she has stitches and drain tubes. Uh, you will notice she is wearing a muzzle and we had to get a muzzle because it's causing her a lot of pain and discomfort. She has a lot of swelling and the gauze pads we had to change a couple times a day would stick to the surgical area and it wasn't comfortable for her and she was getting very upset. She can reach the wounds um, and lick them and stuff too. So we would use the muzzle during the cleaning process so that she didn't get anything um, infected or germy.